hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth instalment of Anna Raftery's TAF Trip Report. Um, I'm John and I'm here with the lovely Anna. Hello, I am the lovely Anna and I'm here with John. <laughs> I don't um, think we need to do this on the fifth one, but yeah. People might have just jumped in at episode five. Like, you know, when they're broadcasting this on BBC4. Um, ah! <laughs> so... <laughs> And you'll we are played, talking. You'll be played oh. by uh, David Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> That's high praise. Yeah, high okay. praise. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that means I'm um, Susan Kalman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would that would work. That I can oh. see that. Oh. Um, anyway, sorry. Go on. <laughs> so later um, on, when we pitch this. <laughs> yes. Yes. So welcome to the pitch meeting. Um, <laughs> So we're here to discuss Anna's fifth destination, which was Las Vegas. Vegas, um, baby. Sorry, so, I, I will try not to do that again. No, do it every time I say Las Vegas. <laughs> Vegas, baby. <laughs> it's important to have a catchphrase. Um, uh, so, yeah, Las Vegas, a place I did not go on my TAF trip. Are the fans there good? Rate the pat of ten. No, um... Oh, it was intense. They are, but it was really good. Um, I think if beforehand I had thought about what Las Vegas fans would be like, they are exactly like that. But I hadn't considered that before I went. <laughs> and so it was definitely a lot. But it, to be honest, in the best way, it was, um, like I said, like we were working out, I think I was there for um a really short amount of time uh i think I had two full days there and the other days traveling um and even on like the day i arrived quite a lot still <laughs> and we still did a lot uh so yeah um but it was really good fun uh and it it felt a lot longer than it actually was because they packed so much in. Um, they are obviously used to kind of taking people on the Las, uh, giving people that kind of Las Vegas experience, but then still also that kind of fan community experience. So that was uh, really interesting, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the day that I arrived, we, <sighs> Uh, I, I got picked up and got taken to, I actually, I can't remember which of the big, like, hotels that I stayed in, um, but, oh, it's probably on the, on the, oh, I think it was on the Rio, which is one of the, the like, yeah. massive hotels, and I, one of the fans there is, um, oh, one of the fans there is, I think, they call it a high roller or something. And so I was okay. able to essentially kind of get a room for me for a night for like nothing. So they put me up oh, wow. for a night in the Rio for nothing, um, which was, yes, Linda, yes. Um, so that was kind of amazing. All the pictures of the palatial hotel room are from that hotel room. It was huge. I think I, I don't think it's on you on uh, Facebook, but there is a video of me walking around that I like sent to the family back home, and it's like, and then this is this room, and then this is this part of the room. Uh, yeah, it was huge. So, kind of, I think one of the first things go. Already had the welcoming committee with uh, everyone, so I got to meet Jackie and uh, Alan, who is, I think, the architect of a lot of the <laughs> um, the the time I was there, and took a lot of the photos. Alan White and oh, and um, Andrew has discovered hey, a badge. Excellent. Let me see. If, uh, I'm too. And we'll be sending yeah. one lucky winner a badge tonight. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we could send it out tomorrow. And I think I have more than one. Um, but yes, so so uh, Anon, Didi, 
Uh, Jackie, um, who, you know, CAF people will be very aware of. I mean, most people are probably aware of all, all these people. Um, and I think Jennifer, uh, Jenny as well, and I'm sure there are other people I've forgotten, which is probably really yeah. bad. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've arrived. Sorry, go on. Jack, Jack was actually my um, co-administrator, like, so oh, she won course. TAF the year I administrated. She won when I administrated it with um, uh, someone. Yep. Who I remember. So that's yep. good. No, um, I do remember. Um, Anne and Brian. Anne and Brian. Yeah. Uh, great. And um, and then she won in 2012 and came yeah. out to yes. Olympus, I think. Yeah. And she produced yeah. her, um, Jack produced her report recently, didn't she? Uh, yes. Uh, to be perfectly honest, beautiful. recently could be in the last five. <laughs> like any she definitely did three. it before me because mine yes. isn't out yet. So. Exactly. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Well, mine is like one fourth out, fifth out? Yeah. I don't know, technically. Anyway. Um, yes. Uh, so it was really cool showing you Jack. I'm pretty sure she told me lots of stories about you. <laughs> oh no. Um, and so that first night, uh, we is when we went to see Rock of Ages. They basically were like, this is the musical that's in the hotel because Las Vegas, they just have musicals in hotels and big shows. It's very surreal. Um, yeah. And they were like, do you like musicals? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was amazingly cheesy and so ridiculous. And because it's Las Vegas, we were at like a table and basically had drinks the entire time. Um, we also experienced nice. one of the those all-you-can-eat buffet uh, experiences that, again, is a very Las Vegas thing, um, which was I, I can't remember anything about it except for the fact it was just like a lot of food and I was very happy. <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think the first night basically um, we kind of got in, did all that stuff and um, I can't remember the order of events. So either we ended up doing a bunch of like touring around and, and seeing like Las Vegas um the other hotels or even that hotel and the the kind of there's a thing where you can take a picture with a million dollars it's like so i took a picture with a million dollars and all this kind of Excellent. things that yeah it is and they're just people drinking everywhere <laughs> which is another one of those things i'm like oh. <laughs> Um, I, it is actually somewhere that I really want to go back to. Um, I think I kind of have said in, in nearly all the other destinations that I don't feel like I got the chance to stay as long as I would have liked, uh, but this definitely felt like that because it was so much so quickly that it just feels a little bit like a weird, slightly surrealist dream, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so... Well, Vegas feels yeah. surreal anyway, right? Like you've yeah, got the exactly. Eiffel Tower and then a pyramid and then a roller coaster on a skyscraper, and it's like, what is happening? <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was really cool, but really weird. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the first kind of day night that we did the really full on like Vegasy stuff. Um, uh, uh, as well as like, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was mostly the first day was that okay. kind of experience. Um, the kind of slightly more cliched stuff, but still lots of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then I know that the next morning we had breakfast at the, I'm pretty sure it was at that hotel, not somewhere okay. else, but I'm pretty sure it was like, it was like a TV chef owned it was like guy fieri type thing excellent 
the casino Mandolin. is so nice. But yeah, I'm like, I think it was something like a Guy Fieri owned place in one of the hotels. And it was one of those, like, American breakfasts at certain places are huge anyway, but it was very much that this is huge and then some. Excellent. Um, so I think it was a case where we like shared the food and it was all really good, uh, but so much. It was like a ridiculous stack of pancakes and that kind of thing. Um, so. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what they did. Oh, I think the second day was when Jack actually took me to like a mall where, which was also really weird. There was like a river in it. I might be making that up, but it is Las Vegas, so it might not be. Like, I'm pretty sure there was like a fake Venice and a river in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, I've been there. Yeah. That, that, you didn't dream that. That is a real... Oh, okay. Yeah, there were gondoliers. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But it's like a mall. <laughs> yes. So weird. It is, um, it is unusual. <laughs> yeah. So that was surreal. But that was where I got my Hugo dress. So we found this like little boutique place that had pretty dresses. And I think I must have had something uh not not that fancy, but like something kind of like you've seen me at conventions. In fact, basically everyone in the participant thing has seen me at conventions. My kind of convention wear is what some people would be like, this is what I would wear to the Hugos or to a party or to be dressed up because for me when I get it's like the kind of comfortable thing is to be able to dress up and be a bit extra yeah. and bright colors and all that kind of stuff because I yeah. don't really have the time or, or whatever in normal day normal day to day so yeah I think I had something that other people would be like that is a very dressy clothes and you would look great. But for me, it was like Sunday at a convention, <laughs> if that makes sense. That's so fair. maybe Saturday, because Saturday's when you really, you know, go all out. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I didn't have anything super fancy. And we went to this shop and I think we found this dress. And I'm actually, I suppose possibly less surprised that I could find something in America for, um, bigger girls because I think they're more likely to be inclusive um, I think it would have been a lot harder at the size that I kind of am now and was then to, to find something in the UK just walking into a shop uh, but yeah I found it and it was completely like the most glam dress ever and I think the most glam thing I've ever owned and it was on sale and so Jack was like uh, you have to get it and I was like I don't have anywhere to wear it the Hugos. So Excellent. I was actually, yeah, that was really lovely. And it was kind of just cool hanging out uh, together, talking like taff things and someone who'd gone through that. Yeah. Um, as well as kind of, I think I picked a brain a bit about kind of uh, administrating and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. I just had like an adrenaline drop <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yes. I think that was definitely something I remember from my TAF trip, and I'm not sure whether I wrote a lot about it, but I remember talking about TAF quite a lot. Yeah. Um, which I guess makes sense if you're there because of TAF. You know, people ask, why are you here? And you're like, TAF. And they're like, what's TAF? And you're like, oh, okay, I'll explain what TAF yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I, I definitely remember talking to, like, um, Randy Byers and um, Anne and Brian about kind of administration and stuff like that because I didn't really know what it was going to be like. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that makes exactly. a lot of sense. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think that night was the when we went to the, there was like a bar, a nerdy bar. Okay. Um, the Millennium Fal Fandom Bar. That's when we went to the Millennium Fandom Bar. 
Okay. Uh, which was really cool. Oh. It was... Oh. Is this where there was an R2-D2 statue? Yes, there's like an R2-D2. Ah. There's loads of like memorabilia and, and stuff on the walls and posters. And like, I'm pretty sure... <laughs> You know, I remember there was a TV playing uh, Batman versus Superman, and so the only Batman I, versus Superman, uh, the only part of the film I've seen was in a loud, crowded bar where you couldn't hear anything. <laughs> you could argue that's the best way. Um... Yeah, probably, probably, uh, but yes, I don't know. It's a weird thing that I remember. I'm not sure I understand. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa doesn't understand. No, not Alexa. Siri doesn't understand. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> it's it's going to kill me now. <laughs> it's going to me in my sleep. Um, but yes, yeah, so we went to um, his fandom bar. And That's excellent. <laughs> I, I'm looking at the photos now because I couldn't remember. But yeah, I <laughs> they got me a Minnie Mouse balloon that says number first birthday. <laughs> 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 And um, crowns from medieval times and like uh, Union Jacks and it was all kind of very first time here, but also you're English. <laughs> it was really weird. Uh, but in like a really sweet way. It was, it was, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it was just so nice. Um, <laughs> it was very funny though. Uh, yeah, and I think the other thing I remember is there was like a Suicide Squad. There was like a group doing like Suicide Squad cosplay or something okay. like that. I think it was Suicide Squad. I think it was around that time that that film oh. came out. Is that and why that, because I was struggling to work out who this person is, but there's a photo of you with someone wearing clown makeup. And yes, I'm now guessing that's the Joker. He's a Joker. And I'm pretty sure there are oh. photos of me with like, at least a few different Harley Quinns as well. Um, or at least, nice. there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was, I think it was around the time that Suicide Squad came out. And uh, yeah, so there was like this huge group there that were all dressed up. It was either they went there for a party dressed as Suicide Squad or it was specifically a Suicide Squad night at the bar. Could have been either of those. Um, but either way, there were lots of Harlequins. I, I, it was great. <laughs> it so, sounds yes. great. Uh, another kind of cool, weird experience um, uh, of the night, yeah. Uh, it was just lots and lots of fun. And uh, there were so many like little nooks and crannies of cool things uh yeah. like comic books and, and memorabilia and all that kind of stuff so yeah i mean i hope it's still there if it is i definitely that's the kind of place i'd like to go to yeah um, i haven't i i haven't been so I'd, I'd at some point i want to go back to vegas and do it properly we should go to vegas we should, we should go to like, vegas be tomorrow so fun. It, no. it's fine to go now right no <laughs> well according to some people I've, to be anyway. fair, I've got a friend who works at the University of Las Vegas, and um, I'm not sure he would recommend Nevada right now, uh, oh, no. <laughs> just for what I glean from his posts. Um, mm. But yes, one day we should one go to day. Vegas. That would be um, really awesome. It would and, be great to see these people again as well. Yes, well, and I, yes, I, I would like to kind of, I am very jealous. <laughs> this is, I think, the one of your stops that makes me the most jealous, because it looks like you're having such a great time. It was. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm just super gel. Um, yeah. And also, no one's ever made me a badge with my name on it. So, you know, that is. Um, well, I'm sure Andrew so will jealous. fix that. Although I would totally wear a badge with your name on it, and then it would be very confusing. Um, I will just say, like, for those of you. For those of you in the audience um, who are thinking, should or should I not go to the Worldcon episode? Um, I will I will share my screen and show pictures of Anna at the Hugos because um, she looks incredibly glam. Uh, so that dress is is um, an amazing dress. Um, yeah, it so, uh, definitely was worth it. Yes, no, absolutely. Um, 
So you you had a convention. You were the guest of honor at a convention <laughs> while you yes. were in Las Vegas. <laughs> and, and, and we yeah. need to talk about that. Yeah. Brunch, brunch con. Well, apparently mm-hmm. it's like a, a, a thing that they do. It's like a common thing that Las Vegas fandom do when someone's coming. It's they do brunch con. And I just love that. Um, so, yeah, so that was, uh, must be the third, the, the second full day, the third day that I was there. Um, because that night after the the thing, we, I went back and stayed with Alan and Dee Dee, and that's where we had mm-hmm. the party was. So basically, just had a day of just hanging out and having some drinks and chatting and bliss, you know, doing all that stuff. And it was just really, it was really hot. It was so hot. Oh my god! I think there is a picture of me standing next to a. A thermometer. Oh yeah, there we go. And it was like forty-five degrees. Yeah. That is, that is too hot. Yeah, I didn't go outside. No, I stayed no. inside. <laughs> yes, it was too hot. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I met Nick Farley who uh, told me lots of stories about Mark and Claire, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like Freud and random. And um, so that was quite funny. Uh, you, can, you can take the girl out of Croydon, but you can't take the Croydon out of the girl, right? Like that's the... the oh, he, he, him. What? No, well, I guess oh, I, me. to me, you, you live in me. Croydon. I know technically you live in the London. Well, no, I know, but, but also I grew up in like Lucian, mate. So <laughs> it's <laughs> you know, I mean Lucian. Although it's actually, basically sure bits like... of London that aren't the London that you see on telly. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I think I mean I think he's, he's from South London as well so we probably bonded yeah. over that but uh, yeah it was kind of interesting to meet someone who had been at one point you know UK fandom knew Mark and Claire all that kind of stuff um, but now was in Las Vegas and Jen his partner was like lovely it's also a romance writer and I was like that is amazing I love that um, so yes what was I talking definitely. about? Yeah, brunch con. It's great fun. There's definitely something when you meet when you meet someone who especially when you've been away from home for like, you know, two or three weeks and you've not been in your home country. Mm. There's definitely something if you meet someone else from your home country, you bond, I think, really quickly over yeah. shared experiences. Um yeah. I've definitely had that in the States before. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that was interesting. I also loved that the whole like theming around the time that I was there was like Harry Potter themed and like one of the one of the first things that they did when I arrived is Alan got me to like pose as if I was holding an owl so that he could photoshop the picture for the the like program books of me with Hedwig. Are you that's freaking genius. Are you telling me that this picture of you with an owl, it, you're not it's holding an owl? This I is, know. I am, I'm disappointed. I know, I know. But they got you but an owl. Um, I also love that every picture in this particular, like, set is me just being really enthusiastic or drinking. <laughs> I mean, those could be overlapping circles in a Venn diagram, right? Like, yeah, but there's think... definitely like a couple of pictures where literally my hands are blurs because I'm just <laughs> decolating so wildly. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, there's it was there's a photograph cool. of you which Liz Batty commented in block capitals. Too excited to be captured in a single image. Yeah. And yes, that sums it up, I think, my, very my well. <laughs> literal, my hand is literally a blur. Uh, yeah, very much so. That was, that's me. Um, but yeah, it was great fun. I think that was, I, no, I've forgotten what I was going to say. 
I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, it was just, I just remember talking to people. I know I talked to Jen a lot about like reading and writing and I got to talk to Jack more about TAF stuff um, and kind of also hearing about, I, I one of the things that I, I'm not sure if I actually spoke about the previous like uh, chats we've had, uh, interviews, uh, that one of the things that's so much fun is hearing about the kind of convention experiences for different people in different areas. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, that kind of, uh, obviously that's part of the tough thing is that fanish cultural exchange but I really enjoyed learning about like the stuff that they did and this is obviously kind of a smallish community there's not a necessarily big enough community there for them to do a more regular uh, kind of convention where people are close enough to be able to come in um, but the fact that they kind of have this and do these brunch cons basically whenever someone comes and visits as far as I can tell uh, well maybe not it was only number five at the time who knows what number they're up to now um but uh, yeah that was really cool I really enjoyed uh kind of hearing all that stuff from them yeah. and yes and I because uh, I have I have on my screen um, mm. a photograph of the program for BrunchCon 5. So I have questions. Ah, yes. My question is, what was the brunch? Um... Because it mentions burgers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like barbecue type stuff. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like a barbecue, basically. Um... I really shouldn't so, only have questions about the food, should I? <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I have, uh, I have started a president, pres, president, precedence. So that's pronounced right. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have talked about food a lot. Um, next, next week is uh, Kansas City, and there was questions. <laughs> there was barbecue with a capital B. Yeah. Oh, and I think that's where the insane carrot cake was actually. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so I'll talk about that next week. <laughs> I remember I remember the Kansas City bid at Luncon mm. had barbecue mm. and it was very good and they were like, This is not as good it. as the barbecue in Kansas City and I was like mm. They yeah, I uh, I remember that. They got it from Bodines and they were like, This is almost as good. So it was good to know that, you know, we can get almost as good here. Yeah. <sighs> I miss going to restaurants. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's a after the thing conversation of, yeah. I'm surprised by the things I miss. <laughs> I never yes. thought I would miss these things. Um, um, but yeah, it was just, uh, there was lots of booze and there was lots of food. There was lots of conversations. I think there were a couple of, yeah, there were some like political conversations there as well. Uh, and I guess we touched on in one of the other ones that it was a very weird political time. So there was some discussions about that stuff, but I'm uh, pretty sure I got, we managed to move on quite quickly. I think that was the one place that somebody was like, oh, well, Brexit's fine. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but yes. Anyway, I get that fine. with my in-laws sometimes. They're like, "What do you think of Brexit?" And I'm like, "I try and think about it as little as possible, but generally angry is how I would yeah. describe myself." Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I think that was the thing of like, "Oh yeah, my parents are both European immigrants to the UK." So no, and he was like, "Oh yeah, my parents are from Europe and they immigrated here," and I was like. Then why? Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's fair. Let's just um, move on. Life is too short. <laughs> the, the, the program mentions movies. Now, I literally have no memory of that. I was just looking at the There's no evidence movie. in any of the photographs that no. any movies were played at I'm all. I'm wondering whether they like just had them on in the background. Because I can't yeah. remember sitting down or watching a movie. That's not something I remember. Because I was really trying to think. 
I can, I can remember. I can't necessarily remember specific conversations, like word for word or anything. Um, That's fair. But yeah, <laughs> it's been I mean, four I can't years. Remember. It would be. Yeah. I can't remember impressive. specific conversations from like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> this afternoon. Um, so yeah, it. Um, but I cannot remember movies <laughs> unless. Nope, literally no idea. That's, I mean, because like I say, it doesn't, it just says movies, movies. And I'm like, that seems out of place with most of the rest of this program, which seems to be dedicated to food and boozing, which are both mm. good pursuits. Um, but yeah. Yep, I was food and booze and chats and hanging out. And I think there was some like uh, movies going on in the living room if you wanted to sit down and watch them. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty sure I was talking non-stop as is basically as is what I did <laughs> yeah <laughs> how it should be definitely um, and did were there people who were also going to Worldcon in Vegas fandom or uh, yeah there were a few um, now I need to try and remember everyone I can't I think um pretty sure Jack was there. And I think Alan and Dee Dee were there. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> no, because I, was, uh, yeah. I remember, oh yes, like, yeah, especially when you're the staff delegate, because they're quite busy even when you're not, but when mm. you are, it is a whirlwind. Um, yeah. I'll have to but, dig out my program for next time. Oh yes, yes, definitely. I think the, int uh, the, the the thing I enjoyed, well, not the only thing, one of the things I enjoyed about my TAF trip was meeting people who I knew I would see at Worldcon, because it meant that when oh, I yeah. got to Worldcon, I had more of a frame of reference, um, yeah, which was yeah. really nice. Um, yeah, I, I definitely felt that. And I think that it was very interesting. Um, the... Like I've done this thing when I go to Easter cons or or to to some of the like or UK World Con, uh, well the two UK World Cons, so maybe not. But there's a the thing of going to certain Easter cons uh, and maybe bringing someone who's quite new and walking around. And there's that thing where you walk around and like every couple of steps you run into someone you know and you stop and have a conversation yeah. or you get a hug or you like whatever. And the other person's like, do you literally know everyone here? And it's like, you don't, but you also kind of do because actually it is like your community. And if it's the, even if you don't necessarily know certain people, you will see them every year. So you kind of recognize them. And the more you go, the more people you know on a, a, a closest uh, kind of um, way. Uh, and so the more people that that happens with, but then it means that um, yeah. So it, when going to that Worldcon, I got a little bit of that, not quite as extreme obviously as in the UK, uh, but there was that actually not just knowing the kind of UK people who were over there or the people who worked on Noncon that were there, but having that extra connection was really lovely. And so I never really had a time where I felt like, oh, there's nobody I know around who I can go and chat with or, or if I just need to sit with someone or whatever. So yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I think the, I mean, obviously this is not um, universally, universally applicable. Um, but the thing that made my first world kind of a lot easier was meeting in Spania, I think, because like we clicked yeah. very quickly and it just felt like we'd known each other forever, pretty much yeah. after an hour of chatting. Yeah. Um, Having a which, couple yeah. of those people that, yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, I think we're veering into the conversation for, for next time, but uh, having... Um, Wetting people's appetites. <laughs> I know, uh, but having um, a couple of people there, like Erin and um, Erica and 
I think Ian Stockdale and a couple of other people who I kind of knew from working on Noncon. Um, that was really nice. And I, uh, I ended up at, uh, oh, and like, I think James was there because there was some bids for Dublin. Um, not bids, but kind of drumming up. Um, yeah, that would have been for it. the year before their bid session, I think. Exactly, so. yeah. So there was, um, so yeah, just kind of knowing the, the, the Dublin people who were over there. I think that's ended up being why there are a few more people than I would normally necessarily know. Um, but that was really nice. Um, and of course, Liz was there, Liz Batty. So that kind of basically yeah. was like, oh, that's fine. It's like having one of my closest friends there meant that I've made everything a lot easier, I think. Um, and uh, yes, <laughs> very lucky. Yeah. I, no, and I, think... I also literally forgot who was there until then. I was like, oh shit, yeah, obviously. Who was that person who I did like all those things with? Yeah. <laughs> She's going to tell me off now. <laughs> um, and I think it's it's good to have that kind of um yeah the anticipation of world con knowing it's just around the corner because was was world con that's starting... why i was so excited i think that's yeah. why i was so hyped at las vegas is because it was the run-up to this um so yeah, yeah but i think like the like i left there uh and then like arrived in Kansas City and um, I think it was a day or two before the con. Yeah, so it was on the 15th and I think the con started on the 17th. So I think you had yeah. like two sleeps as it were. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, yes. Um, but... Uh, yeah. The, uh, yes. We. I think it is. It is 1942, <coughs> um, which which means it might be time to open up for questions. So if anyone has if any anyone questions has for Anna about what she got up to in in Vegas, then please do post them in the chat. Um, if there's anything else I can remember. What was the most ridiculous thing you saw in Vegas? Like, what is the thing that sticks in your head as being like the because there is a there is a photo mm -hmm. in the in the photos which is rather astounding, um, but I'm wondering if that's the, the most astounding. Huge lady. <laughs> yeah, the huge pole dancer where you come up to roughly halfway up her shin. Um, yeah, and, I should know uh, it's a statue of a pole dancer. It's not like it's not like a real put, put, like because otherwise the dimensions would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or she would be on a, a table, which also would make sense. Yeah, well, that's true. That's She's true. She's on a stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we did not. We yeah. did not go into to this uh, show girl bar, um, but uh, yes. It just yeah. I, I think I that don't know why, to be perfectly honest, I think yeah. <laughs> that's a good assumption. I think the having the um. The, the the like mini Venice with gondolas in a mall was yeah. weird. Uh, 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 one of the like most surreal things. For some reason, the like million dollar thing, because that's actually like, I think it's because I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, why is this such a big thing? There's like a guy standing there. People go and take a picture with him. Like, but what? <laughs> So I think that's why that was one of the things that I found really weird. That I was like, I can see that a big deal, uh, <laughs> and and that that it's obviously something people get really excited to do. And I was like, oh my god, seeing a million dollars! I'm like, yeah, but what? <laughs> so for some reason, I was just like, I I just didn't get that. Um, yeah, that's the fair. the gigantic statue of a a, a pole dancer. Eh, that's fine. But million dollars. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> oh, um, there were some questions. What was the there are, were so there hot Christine. dogs involved? Oh yes, yeah. There was a hot dog. I did not go into the I don't 
think I went. No, I didn't go into the hot tub. There are no photos of you in a very wet dress, which I would assume... Well, I probably would have changed to go into the hot tub. Ah, kind of. Um, but I don't think I brought anything to change into, so that's probably why I didn't. There that's were bad. hot tubs involved, I just did not partake. Now I'll be oh. like, yes, I will get in the hot tub. <laughs> that's uh, bad. Christina asks, did they try to make you do a one-shot fanzine at BrunchCon? Um, I don't remember that. They might have done, but I'm pretty sure I would have just said no. <laughs> but, no. I think, do you know what? I think that Alan tried to get me to like filk something because it's like, oh, you're a filk fan instead of a zine fan. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm, not one of, I'm not one of those Phil fans that can just write a thing. Um, That's so, yes. That's yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, I don't think they tried to make me do anything, but maybe they were like taking notes of all the complete bullshit that I was talking because I'm pretty sure in every po picture you can see that I'm just like talking non stop. <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, a sign of a good party. Yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, is this another question? It's two questions in one. Oh, it is. You got, do you, do you, shall I? I? Out. Yeah. Okay. So, you've been to a lot of, this is from Jerry Sullivan, yes. you've been to a lot of cities and met a lot of fans at this point in the trip. So like, um, and you sound like you're really bright and perky and meeting lots and lots of people. But Jerry asks, did you have any down days for relaxing and how wiped were you feeling at this point? Or did the, the lure of Worldcon kind of buoy you up? Um, I was feeling, I think I was in that kind of, you know, when you're really tired, but... yes something fun is happening <laughs> yeah. it's 2020 everyone knows what, <laughs> what oh, but I, like know, I know the type of time yeah, the specific type of time where you're kind of tired but there are so many exciting things happen so you just get like adrenaline yeah. rush and keep going and going and going so I was feeling like wiped but I was running on adrenaline and so yeah. I think that's also why I was like really hyper for that part of the trip and some of that like the first half when we were talking about it I kind of felt that and that's why I felt a bit of a, like why am I like, so <laughs> suddenly like okay calm down um so yeah and I think that was one of the reasons why like technically because the welcome didn't start for like I had like an extra day to probably could have extended it but I just needed a bit of extra time mm. um and like I said there's so many people coming for like Dublin and and like uh, I knew a lot of program people um, because it was, it was kind of a lot of crossover with long con program people and so it was like getting a chance to meet certain like touch base with certain people before the onslaught of world con yeah um so yeah I did to get a little bit of downtime in between the two kind of got a day off basically but I'm pretty sure I went and registered and saw people so it probably wasn't doesn't really count this day off that's always the way um I had just before this um I was in wait well, actually was I in where was I looked before this oh no I was in San Francisco before this wasn't I yes and that was quite busy eating coffee cake yeah oh that was so good I've completely forgotten where I was. So yeah, I was kind of, yeah, running on adrenaline, uh, feeling quite wiped, but excited. Um, I had a little bit of downtime in Seattle, which was like two stops before. And while San Francisco is quite full on, there are, because certain points were, um, I happened to know some of the people a little bit better um like it wasn't meeting for the first time so i think it was a slightly different type of of kind of stress well, not really stressful yeah. but you know if you know what i mean but it's a slightly different t type of experience where i'm seeing people i already know versus meeting lots of people for the first time which is obviously the majority of these types of tr of uh, uh, attached trips so um yeah i think that meant that I kind of was able to power through 
the, the um, experience of Las Vegas fandom. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then we have another question, which I think must refer to the million dollars, which is, was it a, was it uncut sheets of sort of... 20... No, no, it was like bills piled up oh. in a pile. And how much did it cost to dive into them? More than I could afford. Oh, I think, I think you can't even take a picture of it unless you paid, which is why I don't think there's a picture of sense. us with it. That both of those make sense. Um, so I like I saw it, and they were like, I, "I'm pretty sure." Like Alan was like, "Or oh, do you like? Do you want to take a picture with it?" I was like, "That's fine. <laughs> it's a pile of money." Yeah. I've got Obviously, 50p in pennies and I'll bring it to Eastercon and, and we can pose. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's fine. Yeah, they monetize the money. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I yeah. should not read, I keep forgetting that this is <laughs> being transferred. I suppose reading comments without context is not fun. Sorry. <laughs> They're just, I mean, so I'm going to give Claire the transcripts. So, so yeah. realistically, she will magic them into um, coherent things, and it will be great. Thank if, you, Claire. If anyone can. You're trying to make me coherent. It's a tough job. <laughs> On a good day. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, are there any other questions in the chat? It's very warm. Because it is very warm, right? Oh my god! It's warm yeah. here. Well, it, I think it's also humid, which is not helping because there's a lot of cloud about. Now we're just being in, really British and talking Francisco. about the weather. Yeah. Well, that's traditional, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. My watch Probably just told me that there's going to be rain. You can't see my watch. No. The San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge told me there's going to be rain. Oh. Ooh. So Jerry's million dollars was a giant sheet of uncut bills hanging between two sheets of plexiglass suspended inside a giant golden horseshoe. Which is more exciting than a stack. Pretty sure it was a stack. I have an image of a stack. That I'm image a... <laughs> is a bizarre image. Exactly. I, I mean, that it. sounds kind of, mu yeah, much more visually exciting, um, <laughs> as Jerry said. That is fair. Um, okay. So if there are no other questions from the chat, we can, if you like, transition into the drinking and chatting part of the evening. Um which um, is good because beer. 